you know, when you stay in that athletic stance, you're going to put yourself in a better chance to, you know, get a puck back, get closer to the net for perhaps a re, you know, all these little probability things is more or less what we work on. Well, it, it does help certain players quite a bit. Something that a lot of people, myself included, when I grew up was, was kind of missing. What's going on guys? This is Brain from Advancement Hockey Advising here. Today we have a really cool interview here with Neil Manning. Now for those of you who don't know Neil, he actually works really closely with us because he's partnered with us with his company. We'll get to that in a sec. But first off, he's a, a pro hockey player. He's honestly a defenseman that's crushed it at every level he's played. So he's crushed it at the WHL level in Major Junior. He's crushed it at the U Sports uh, level at the University of British Columbia. And now he's crushing it in Ligue Magnus in France, which is a really good pro league in Europe. Neil definitely knows what he's talking about and he's really the guy that if you want to have feedback on how to improve as a defenseman or as a player altogether but especially for defensemen this is the guy you want to talk to he runs a video company called hockey video training they basically look at your video you know you send them video clips or whatever they analyze and break it down and then they go step by step show you all the little comments and how to improve and we'll, we'll put some clips on here on our YouTube video to, to kind of show you but basically that's what they do in a nutshell this is me explaining it once we get into the interview here he's gonna explain it a lot better than me now before we dive in here just a quick reminder as always to absolutely destroy that like button and if you're new here and you're considering you know watching this videos if you want to see more of this kind of content definitely consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward all right without further ado here let's dive right into the interview with Neil. all right Neil glad to have you here today how are you I'm doing great thanks for having me awesome how's uh, how's France treating you you know what? It's nice. Uh, the weather these days is in the mid twenties, and everyone back home is complaining uh, how cold it is in Canada these days for 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 May. So I'm actually I'm actually quite happy. <laughs> That's nice. I'm jealous. But uh, all right. So I guess you know. Without further ado, we can dive right into it here. So why don't you tell the viewers and myself a little bit more about yourself and your your hockey background altogether? Grew up on Vancouver Island, so I played my minor hockey in Nanaimo. Just you know your normal. Uh, Adam, Pee Wee, Bantam, AAA, whatnot. And then I was drafted by the Giants of the WHL uh, in my Bantam draft year. So that's uh, as a 14 year old, a year earlier, a year earlier than in the O and I believe in the Q, I think. I'm not sure when the Q is. Played a couple games as a 15 year old, which was nice. That was the year Vancouver hosted the Mem Cup. So I was around there for the run as like a seventh defenseman played one playoff game didn't play in the mem cup but i was i was there so that was a super cool experience and then i was full-time 16 to 20 uh with the vancouver giants and then after that i decided to to get my uh, education so i went to ubc played four years there got a commerce degree was kind of humming and hawing as to what i wanted to do next and i still had a lot of love for the game so i decided to go play hockey went to italy for a couple of years and had a year uh, in North America. I was in the ECHL, a couple of call-ups in, in the AHL. Then I went to uh, Germany, and then I've spent the last three years here in France, and I'm going into my uh, fourth year in France. So kind of been a lot of different places, but it's been it's been great. Awesome stuff. So you have a lot of experience in a lot of different good leagues. So why why don't you like dive deeper into into the style maybe or, or how it's different among the leagues? Like let's say Major Junior in the WHL, and then you know moving on to uh, CIS or U Sports they call it now, and then compare that also to pro in Europe. How, how would you say uh, each each uh, level differs? Yeah, well I'd say the dub is I kind of see it as like an apprenticeship for the NHL. So you got, you know, being in Vancouver, back then I played at the Coliseum. So I was the Vancouver Canucks old, old arena. We had eight to 14,000 fans a game. You know, you're treated unbelievable. The bow reps would be coming and giving you whatever you wanted. And you played 72 games. So it was, you know, a ton of games. Your primary focus was hockey, you know, even as a uh, grade 11 and grade 12 are you, you were focused on hockey you wanted to get drafted and then you know if that didn't work out uh you were playing as 18 19 20 in you know trying to get signed um so it's a good league you play a lot of games there's you know some of the top draft picks you'll almost very frequently come out of the chl so whether that be the dub the o or the q it's really kind of the pro mentality and it's like you know i see it as almost an apprenticeship complete kind of Complete turn when I went to uh, to U Sports uh, at UBC. Uh, awesome, awesome league, Canada West. But you just played two games a week, Friday, Saturday, and at that point, your primary shift, as opposed to trying to get drafted or trying to get signed to the NHL, it was 
um, you know, academics. So I think for the vast majority of U sports players, they're playing hockey and they're taking it seriously, but the reason they're there is for the degree as opposed to, you know, in the dub, you're there for the hockey, right? So my goal was to you know, play well, get better, improve as a hockey player. So I'd have a chance to play pro after if I wanted to take that route. But at the end of the day, I, I chose to go to university for the degree or else I would have just played pro after my WHL career. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a shorter season. I think back when I was there, we played 26 games. It's just a Friday, Saturday. So those are hard, hard nosed games against pretty hard nosed teams in Canada West. It's pretty competitive. Uh, and then going overseas to Europe, very different. You know, every league got a little bit is, is a little bit different as well. So I've been a couple different places, but you know, the culture, the life experience, I, I personally, I love it. You play 40, 40 to 50 games. So it's a little, uh, you know, not as hard on your body as in North America, there's a bigger ice surface. So it's, it's a little less physical. Um, for, you know, for that reason, just because it's a bigger ice surface alone, you get little international breaks. So a couple times a year when say I'm in France now, there'll be French guys on the, the national team. So you get a week long break while they're playing exhibition games. And then you get to take a point, you know, you get to go to Barcelona or you get to go to Prague or you get to go to Croatia. So it kind of splits up the season quite nicely. Whereas back home, you don't, you know, you get the one all-star break in the NHL, a short little break in the coast for all-star break. But here you get a couple pretty good sides, one week breaks. And, um, um, I know all the imports uh, really love that. And at the same time, the hockey, it's, it's, it's good hockey. It's competitive hockey and it's doing what, what you love to do. So uh, there's, they're all different, but they all enjoyable and you're trying to get different things at all of them, I would say. Yeah, for sure. That's a great way to compare the, the three, I'd say. Um, it's funny you mentioned U sports, like back, back when you played, it was only 26 games. I'm not sure what it is now, but I'm sure it's something similar. And uh, for, in my experience, NCAA D3 was, was similar as well you didn't play that many yeah. games compared to when you played junior like for you guys uh, you played you know 72 games or whatever in your in your seasons yeah. and I played like you know 55 to 60 games so it's a bit that that for me was a big transition where it was like every game mattered that much more at the college level you know because you only yeah. had a number of games yeah at the end of the 72 game season in the dub I had withered away to next to nothing so in, <laughs> in at university I could kind of maintain maintain a little bit of weight which was nice <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So what 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 do you think um as a player, what do you think are like the, the key things that that allowed you to kind of move up and play at those high levels and keep moving up and play like like at U sports level and at the at the pro level in Europe and all that? Maybe we can start with the off ice things and then we can move into the the on ice <clears throat> after as a D. I mean, I always tried to put work in in, in the summer. Uh so training standard training with a, with a group of guys but um i think what perhaps differentiated me from you know maybe people that had the same kind of physical ability as me was perhaps my uh my brain i guess you know i was a smart player um i like to watch hockey a lot so you know even off the ice watching nhl games Back then, you know, I was a big house fan. My favorite player was Andre Markov at the time. I'd watch him. I'm a left-handed D-man just like, just like him. So I'd pay attention to little things he does. You know, Scott Niedermeyer, another guy I watched. So something off the ice I, I did a lot that I think made me better was just watch some of these guys who I respected and, and liked a lot. I, I've talked about this in the past with, with other people, and it's it's a great point, which is why I'm cutting you off, is you no, watch so a, you watched a lot of hockey, and I feel like that's how you learn and how you develop good hockey IQ. I Of course, I think some players have it more than others naturally, but I think you can learn it if you watch a lot of really good players and you watch a lot of video of yourself. And that's so why I just want to really emphasize that point, because I feel like there's this misnomer out there that, you know, it's either you have it or you don't hockey IQ. I think there's some truth to that, but I think it can be learned as well if you watch hockey. Oh, I totally agree. And there's a difference between, you know, watching hockey as a, as a fan and watching hockey to try and get better yourself, right? So, um, you know, if I'm watching hockey as a fan and just kind of chatting with a buddy and it's more in, in the background, I'm probably not going to get much out of it. But if I'm really focusing on, you know, perhaps a specific player, then I, I think I can learn from that player. And I still still think the same today. Yeah, for sure. And so I cut you off, but maybe we can dive into the, the skills on the ice too that, that you um, 
you know, that you try and cultivate to, to, to play at the level that you've played at. So what, what are the, maybe as a D, like the, the top three skills that you focus on to improve every single day? Um, for me, I think like, especially in today's hockey, breaking out is, in my opinion, probably the most important skill for a defenseman. If you can break up the, break out the puck well and keep it honestly out of your hands, you're, you're, you're going to have success and you're going to, you know, stay out of your own zone. And if you're a defenseman and you're not playing in your own zone, then that's a, that's a real good thing. So, um, uh, you know, retrievals, puck retrievals, getting back to the puck quick, you know, doing the shoulder checks, getting it on your forehand right away, as opposed to dusting it off. Those are a couple of things that, that I work on and that I think all defensemen should work on because it's super important to be able to break the puck out clean and crisply. And uh, you'll, you'll be in the ozone and that's, quite honestly, the fun place to play. So that's, that's where you want to play. Another thing would be gap. And this kind of ties right into breaking out the puck. If you're a defenseman, if you got a good gap, you're going to force the other team to dump it. And then when they dump the puck, well, now you, your D partner, the, the first forward back, and those three players, you know, obviously the wingers as well. That's when you guys can work on breaking out the puck. If you have a bad gap, then uh, you don't even have the ability or the opportunity to break out the puck because you're, you're, you're still defending. Right. So if, if you have a bad gap, they enter the zone with possession and now uh, you're defending. And so, yeah, you know, you're playing in the zone you don't want to play in and you, you, you're kind of you're chasing essentially, as opposed to you get a good gap. And there's a lot of different strategies as to have a good gap. You know, you're not always going to have a perfect gap every time. But if you have a bad gap, you know, at one area in the neutral zone, there's things you can do to, to turn that bad gap into a better gap and to still give yourself a good chance to, you know, push the guy to, to the wall where he's forced to dump it. it might not be where you want them to dump it. So it might not be at the red line or the blue line. It might be at the top of the circles, but at the end of the day, if they're dumping it, now it gives you guys, the, your team, yourself, the chance to break it out. So those are the two most important things. The third, I'd say on the other end of the ice in the ozone as a demon to be able to get pucks to the net. Uh, if you get a puck, you know, low to high and you're not getting it at the net, then you're not doing your job. Um, if you're receiving a D to D puck, uh, at the blue line from your partner and you're not getting it down to the net, then you're not doing your job. And if, if that happens too often, then you're, oh, you, you know, the coach isn't going to be happy, but your teammates probably aren't going to continue to pass you the puck as well. Right. So, uh, <laughs> that's another thing. And it doesn't need to be a, a hard shot. It just needs to get down there. Uh, at the goalie at the net and then good things will happen so those are I think the first two are for sure the most important but uh, you know you do those first two things to play more in the offensive zone and then once you're in you're in the offensive zone I think it's important to be able to get your puck to the net as a demon yeah no honestly like I couldn't agree with you more those are top three like really really important skills first of all having a good gap right and that's a lot easier said than done it takes a lot of practice to be good at gapping up against like super fast guys if you're trying to gap up against mcdavid it's going to be pretty tough right so it's a it's a very it'll be different yeah yeah <laughs> but it's a it's a tough skill to master so it's it's a really good one for a defenseman if you want to improve your defensive game gapping up's huge and then puck retrieval and making a good first pass again easier said than done it's it's very difficult to do on a consistent basis especially when you have a bit trickier place to do but if you can master those two skills you're honestly like coaches are going to be drooling over you if you, if you can consider yeah. that over and over again. And then the last one that you mentioned getting pucks to the net, I see defensemen so many that they try and wind up, like they take forever to wind up and try and get the hardest shot possible. I don't, like you said, I don't think that's the most effective. Like obviously you don't want to be throwing buffins at the net, but you want to not focus so much on the hardest shot possible, but one that actually gets through. And a couple of D that I played with that were really effective were the guys that they didn't have the hardest shots, but they always got through and they, they either scored occasionally or most likely they got rebounds and then we'd score yeah. the scoring chances. So I couldn't agree more. Top three, like amazing skills to list out here as a defenseman. And they're not, you know, none of them are sexy skills either. You know, they're not, but they're just super important. So uh, I'm happy you agree. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. All right. So I guess we can transition into, into what you do. You know, you mentioned how important it is uh, to watch video and how you've done it a lot in the past and maybe talk to, to everyone a bit about what you do as a company and what service you provide. And then 
and then why it's, it's kind of important? Yeah. So um, I started a company, it's called Hockey Video Training. You know, I had kind of been watching, you know, like I said, players my, my whole life. A while back, you heard about Adam Oates uh, working with some of the best players in the world doing this one-on-one -on -one video work. I've had tons of video in my life. But the majority of it with teams has been team structure. So it's been the coach showing video to the whole team. And it's more of an X and O's thing. You know, power play, PK, where you should be uh, in the D zone, where you should be in the neutral zone, things like that, as opposed to kind of individual video that works on routes you're taking. So, you know, what route am I taking to retrieve a puck as a defenseman or as a little habit? So as a, as a winger on the wall, before you receive the pass, you know, are you shoulder checking? Are you seeing your different options? As a D-man at the point, if I'm about to receive a pass D to D from my partner, like I mentioned, I said one of the skills is is getting the puck on on the net. That that doesn't even necessarily mean having a good shot, like you mentioned. It's more before I get the puck, I'm looking at the winger, and before I've even received it, I'm you know skating horizontally, laterally, to make sure that I'm not in the shooting lane of the guy who's supposed to be blocking my shot. So right when I get it, I know that I either have a lane or I know which way I need to step in order to get a lane because I've already done my work uh, before I got the puck. So uh, what we do at Hockey Video Training is a lot of these little things. It's little details, little habits that work on your efficiency, work on your routes. And it's really about trying to kind of give you the best probability of success on the ice. And we, look, we talk about puck possession a lot because obviously that's, to me, so important in the game, puck possession and having the puck and then getting it to areas where you can score. But before you get it to an area to score, say you're in the D zone or you're in the neutral zone, it's about the probability of, you know, working probabilities to maintain possession to get it to a place where you can score. So sometimes that is, you know, as a, as a winger reading the gap between the D and himself, if there's a tight gap and you don't have, you know, low center support or something, perhaps it's a soft chip. Now, what do you do after the soft chip? Do you, you know, a lot of people have a little pause. So they, they make a pass and then they pause or they make a chip and then they pause. Well, we like to get rid of that pause in people's game. So a lot of the kind of little things that people might not think about. So you could make a great pass in the offensive zone, but then after the pass, you look at your body position, you, you, you go, you know, straight, and then you engage a second later. Well, right after the pass, if then you try and find open ice, you know, when you stay in that athletic stance, you, you're going to put yourself in a better chance to, you know, get a puck back, get closer to the net for perhaps a re, you know, all these little probability things is, is more or less what we work on. And uh, honestly, I, I think it helps. Well, it, it does help certain players quite a bit and um it's something that a lot of people myself included when i grew up was was kind of missing as a as a tool in my game i mean i had a i saw a guy for shooting i saw a power skating coach i you know saw a, a personal trainer in the summers we had our coach doing a bunch of team videos so i my team systems i had down to to a t but when it came to kind of little individual things that could make me more efficient on the ice and give me better probability of an assist, a goal, you know, a clean breakout. Uh, those are things that, you know, were missing a little bit in, in my career, but that I'm trying to kind of, we're trying to fill, fill that little hole, that little gap that we think uh, can help a lot of players. Yeah, no, for sure. I think it's really important because I think it's good to, to watch videos, a video of yourself and others and all that stuff to learn. But I feel like you can only learn so much by watching it yourself because you don't get that expert feedback, right? You guys are, are pro hockey players doing this, like that have played at high levels of hockey and you, and you do this like for a living, right? You do this a ton and you know, like the little things to look out for that, you know, other players, you know, younger players might not pick up, you know? So I think it's really important to get that expert feedback for you guys to be able to pick it up and then it registers in the player's mind and then they can make the switch from there. Cause if you just watch it yourself all the time, you, you don't always pick those little things up. So that's why I like the service. Couldn't agree more. I mean, sometimes, you know, you'll see yourself, you'll think, Oh, I made a great pass, which would be true, right? You would make a great pass, yeah. but what did you do after the pass or, um, you know, there's just so many different situations in a game. And so, you know, our service is basically, we will watch every shift of a player in a game and we'll record that we'll stop we'll pause it we'll use voiceover arrows you know little graphics 
and then the rep- the player receives uh, the video with all the voiceover, all the graphics of all the shifts in the game, and that's kind of uh, that'd be like a, you know a one game package. People do five game packages, so it's that same thing. But then obviously, as the five games go on, we'll see, we'll see little trends, we'll see improvements, we'll work on you know one thing, two things in your first couple games, then we'll um, progress once those things are kind of. Um, you know, we're checking the boxes on different different habits that that they're now doing correctly. So it's it's nice to see players implement some of the little kind of habits. Um, you see them making the little reads, reading space on the ice, trying to attack the middle as opposed to kind of cornering yourself to the wall, doing the couple shoulder checks before they're retrieving the puck, putting your toes one way, and then you know doing a tight turn the other way, being evasive, being deceptive. Those are all little things that, that we can help with and um you know it's usually it's a 10 to 20 minute at the most video that they get back uh and they can kind of watch it over themselves and then obviously we're usually pretty open to be able to ask a couple questions uh if if any are needed oftentimes they aren't because we do do the voiceover to explain kind of our thought process on what we're seeing um but it's also nice to you know at the end of it ask a couple questions and uh, for feedback so that's kind of the product that they get from us after they um you know after they decide to 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 use us as a tool yeah for sure that's great i think you explained it really well and um say it's probably it's probably quite gratifying to see like let's say they take a five or a ten game package or whatever their improvement as they go and then to see like the little changes they've made you know it's probably nice to see that as a as a video coach right Honestly, it's awesome, and that's why, like, you know, I've I've done uh, I've done a one game package. You know, it's not really a package, but I've done one game before, which you know, it's for sure has benefit. But you know, for me, it, it just it's like you said, the the best part is to actually see the players implementing things that that you've spoke on, and then you know, at the end of it, when you chat with them they'll tell you, look, I could just tell I got better at this. I could tell I got better at that. And it was from this little work we've done. And, you know, it's, it's just, like you said, it's just someone else a completely, you know, a complete third party person, not, not the coach, not their parent, not themselves, not their teammate, not their buddy. It's just a, you know, a third party person who watches a lot of, a lot of video and I, really we just like to help. And if we can help a player get a little bit better, feel a little more comfortable, get a couple more points, you know, whatever, whatever we can do to help, it's, it's awesome to see. And we do see, you know, nice improvements. I'm not saying we see them score a hundred more goals, but just, you know, <laughs> even a crisper breakout, right. That's awesome for us to see someone put in, you know, the work, look at the, watch the videos and then adjust so that they're actually making better in-game decisions based on their reads based on their habits based on their routes they're taking and a lot of that is things that we go over in 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 the video and so you can like you said in a five-game package you can see by the fourth fifth game that um they're implementing the things they saw in the first three games so it's 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 awesome yeah yeah for sure and it's the little things that only like really you guys and the experts notice and not so much like the the parents and all that might not notice, but it's, it's, it's those little things that are going to allow you to score more goals and get more chances and all that kind of stuff. So I think, I think that's awesome. So I guess to kind of wrap up here before we do, I, my last question I always ask everyone is what's, what's like your last piece of advice that we might not have touched on today that you'd like to give to young players out there? Yeah, it's a good one. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I guess, yeah, I don't want to sound too cliche, but like, don't take anything for, you know, don't take what you do for granted. And I'm not saying it's a profession for you as a Bantam player, as a midget player, as a junior player, but it's pretty awesome that you get to play hockey. So enjoy yourself. If I didn't enjoy myself, I wouldn't be able to play at the level I'm playing at or, um, and then a lot of guys I know are the same, you know, guys that have had good NHL careers, they're they enjoy what they do and so that's big just you know have fun enjoy what you do but also don't take it for granted so when I say that you know enjoy yourself but you can also compete hard work hard you can do a lot of the little things pay attention to the little details Uh, at the end at the end of the day there's tons of athletes you know there's tons of players in Europe that are 
significantly faster than NHL players, but they might be playing in Europe as opposed to the NHL for, you know, a handful of reasons. But basically, if you follow little habits and details, you're going to give yourself a, a good opportunity to play at the highest level that, you know, is possible for, you know, your, for your best self. And um, yeah, so enjoy yourself. Don't take things for granted. And uh you know, pay attention to like we've been talking about, you know, throughout this uh, little interview is the little details. They might not go unnoticed, but they might, they might not go noticed, but they make a big difference. And um, in stats and coaches, like you'll, you'll gain trust, you'll get more ice time and uh, good things happen when, when, uh, when you get more ice time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Great stuff. Well, Neil, thanks so much for taking the time today. It's uh, it was a pleasure. I definitely uh, took some key points out of here. I'm sure. The people watching are definitely going to get a lot of value out of this interview. So thanks again for your time. No problem. Thanks so much for having me. It was, uh, it was a pleasure. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right, guys, that is it for the interview here. Hopefully you got a ton of value out of this. I really think that there was a lot of good gold nuggets out of this conversation here. And, you know, utilizing video to improve ourselves, it honestly is one of the best things that you can do as a hockey player, aside from practicing and learning on the ice. I think watching video is a really key component that you can use to improve uh, your skills, your hockey IQ, everything. So this is definitely a service that I think makes a lot of sense for players if they want to take their game to that next level. If you want to, um, you know, find out more about their service, Service. the link is in the description below and uh, you, you know if you have any questions whatsoever for for me for Neil anyone uh, feel free to shoot us a, a comment down below or send us an email at info at ahadvising.com and we'll get back to you about it as soon as we can apart from that if you haven't already and you really like this kind of content if you got any value out of it whatsoever consider destroying that like button it really goes a long way for the algorithm and for other people to be able to see these kind of videos also too if you're new here and if you haven't already and you like these videos consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you never miss another video moving forward all right guys that wraps it up here for the video that is it thanks so much for watching hope you hopefully you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on that next one